questions and then we can have the tea break, which I'm sure you all were waiting for. Thank you, Beth, and uh, thank you, Matthew, for the two presentations. I'm Peter, uh, I work on the Niger Capital Accounting Program. Uh, I just wanted to link the two presentations. My comment is just a comment, but also trying to see that what we are discussing can yield or can improve on what is being done. Uh, if you look at what Matthew presented, is where he mentioned about uh, standardizing data, but also in terms of linking that data to uh, a national system, like where he mentioned that uh, they had to gazette the tool. And for me, that's very interesting because if all researchers and all the, the stakeholders can agree on a certain tool to use. And then, uh, because one of the major challenges we saw is that data is scattered in different formats, but if we can pull all this together and, and, and we gazette at the national level, we said this is the tool we're using, and these are the requirements for each researcher to follow, for this information also to be able to be accessed in a certain format agreed, be used across the board. I think this is, uh, this is, I think, a key recommendation going forward, that if we can achieve this as a country in terms of black biodiversity data, this could be a good progress. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for that question. Um, I uh, absolutely agree with you, and we really look to our partners with Sandy, with Oxford, with uh, Kansas that are here now helping us to um, to figure this out, really, because developing the information system um, is a lot of different working parts, and one of those is um, getting the data access and getting it into a format that can go up into that system. So um, I do think it will be a balance between, um, I think it's important in science to be flexible and not you know, mandate absolutely everything, but on the other hand, um, I think there are ways, and Sandy certainly has a lot of experience with that and can help us with that in how we achieve that so that data are mobilized more rapidly. Yeah. I think there was a question too over there. You can get both of them. Thank you for the, uh, for the nice presentations. Uh, I'm Musa Mabana from Rwanda Agriculture Board. Uh, I want to uh, stress that the issue is uh, when I see uh, biodiversity data, uh, data efforts, data collection, etc., I wonder why there's a bit of disconnect between what we call environmental social safeguards uh, frameworks that are in each project, in each agriculture project, each, um, each World Bank project, let's say an example. Uh, so that means we need to move, get data not only in protected and, uh, 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 systems, in new way, uh, uh, Kura, etc. So how, how do we link that? How, how, what about those data uh, consultants collect every time? How, how are we integrating them to a, a national system? Uh, this is my question. Just an example, uh, it happens at the city of Kigali, something strikes me, as uh, the district wanted to build houses in countries where there are plenty of, of, of um, um, parts uh, on, on the zoo. They, there's really, nobody could even warn them that what we're doing is, 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 a, is, a, is not good, because the, the way we analyze data into a data can't inform decision making in a day to day uh, basis. So, uh, this is my question. Yeah, that's a fantastic observation and uh, it's extremely important. Um, I, I don't know if Matthew has a comment on you know the logistics of how you actually do that, but um, you're absolutely right. That's that's precisely what we need to do. You know, I was thinking about today, this morning being the ozone day, and biodiversity data are a key importance in there because reducing emissions is linked to having functioning ecosystems, and a lot of what we talk about there is on working landscapes, which I think is linked to what you're talking about. Um, so I think that I can. 
you know, comment back to you on that is that the vision we have is we're starting small with Mukungwa, um, but based on this, you know, stakeholder interaction, um, you know, we do believe we'll get to the point where we will be looking at um, biodiversity data in also in working landscapes, which is a dominant part of the landscape here in Rwanda, as it is in many countries. And Matthew showed many examples of um, how that can be useful in EIAs and, and land use planning and development. So I hope that you'll keep reminding us of that as we move forward with this initiative and you know, come to the BIMF, uh, the Biodiversity Information Management Forum, because we need to hear the voices from agriculture in there as well. So I really appreciate that you raised that point. Thank you so much for such a nice uh, presentation. Uh, my name is uh, Emmanuel H. Martin from Tanzania. Uh, during your presentation, you mentioned that one of the activities you guys are going to do is to develop a national so that I develop a decade of buffer zone effectiveness. Uh, my question is which buffer zone are uh, near the protected areas? And if yes, uh, I'm just curious about what do you use to tell that, okay? This is improving, or this one is not improving. Yeah, thank you. The, um, the project looked at socioeconomic indicators and biodiversity indicators, and um, we looked at what data are currently available. Um, so it wasn't for going out and doing the monitoring, but we were trying to set up a system or a framework that could begin the monitoring. So socioeconomic indicators, um, and also of buffer zone effectiveness, and also biodiversity indicators. And um, it was, we chose to do this around Nguye National Park. Uh, I suppose it could have been any other national park, but Nguye has fairly intact buffer zone and had um, intact data sets that we could start to look at. 